Hey guys, Kaylee Jean here with Falcons and Pentacles Tarot, and today I just wanted to make a quick video just kind of sharing with you guys a little bit about my personal spiritual journey and sort of where I've come from and where I'm at now. I also wanted to address some questions that I have been getting, you know, repeatedly in the comments. So the first one is that a lot of you guys have been asking about this ring that I wear. It's blue agate and it is an agate slice ring. So you can get that on Etsy or um, I got mine when I was in Los Angeles uh, for the alchemy exhibit when it was at the Getty. So they had them there. I don't know <laughs> where else you can get them. Probably just online though. Etsy definitely has agate slice rings. So that's the first one. The second one that I get a lot is about this necklace that I wear, and it's actually rose quartz crystal, and a friend of mine actually made it for me, so her Etsy shop is Silk and Thistle, and her name is Sarah. She doesn't actually sell jewelry on her Etsy shop, but she's an amazing artist, so I'm just putting it out there. You guys should go check her out. And uh, so yeah, those are the two jewelry questions that I get a lot. The other thing that I wanted to share with you guys because I get a lot of questions about it is my own personal astrology. So I'm a Scorpio sun and a Virgo rising. And I feel like I've connected a lot more with my Scorpio uh, in the past, but then only more in the last couple of years have I looked more into Virgo rising. And I actually now really associate with that as well. So I feel like they're both very strong energies in my chart. I've been told that I'm Plutonian uh, and that I do have a really a lot of Scorpio energy in my chart because I actually have Pluto and the sun and Venus and the moon all in Scorpio all kind of conjunct to each other. They're all very close together. So Pluto is conjunct all of those planets uh, that are your personality planets, and they're all in Scorpio. So it's a lot of Scorpio energy, uh, but I feel like that kind of does help, you know, me with my readings and, you know, just kind of points to a lot of the sensitivity that I've experienced in my life from an early age. So I guess I'll just start there because that is kind of the beginning of my spiritual journey is that since I was very young, I have had a lot of sensitivity to pretty much everything. <laughs> I've been really sensitive, almost even physically, very sensitive to <clears throat> just my senses. My sense of smell is really strong and I would sort of be really strongly affected by subtle smells that it seemed like nobody else around me was affected by, but I was, you know, sometimes completely affected and needed to sort of leave a space, you know, because of a subtle smell that other people like weren't even picking up. So I remember a lot of things like that when I was younger, that I was just really affected by things that it didn't seem like other people around me were as affected by. And I always was getting told that I was too sensitive by my family and yeah, I think I was just kind of felt very misunderstood in certain in certain ways and felt that there was almost like something wrong with me. I felt that I was weak and that I wasn't um like I wasn't strong somehow <laughs> like the other people around me. And I I also have always had this weird thing with my hands ever since I was ever since I can remember. I've had this thing with my hands where it's almost like I can't touch certain surfaces or certain fabrics, especially if they are, you know, very bumpy or if they have this kind of a lot of detail in them because it's almost like I can feel every single little thread in the fabric with my fingers and it's it, I don't know how to describe it, but it's very uncomfortable <laughs> and, and it makes me feel like it gives me chills and it makes me just really not be able to touch that surface, whatever it is. And so I've always had that and everybody who I've told that to has thought it was really weird and it was actually, it's actually kind of annoying, but um, I'm starting to realize that that might also be part of 
like a constellation of other things about me and like my experience as a person that points to a strength that I can use for example intuitively or just being sensitive to things it's not necessarily a bad thing but I always felt like it was something wrong with me so I definitely have something with my hands um and yeah that and also just sensitivity to sounds like unpleasant sounds or violence in movies or, you know, things I always felt like such a baby, you know, if I was, you know, in my teen years or something, if I was at a friend's house and they were watching a horror movie, I was always the person, you know, hiding behind the couch or just having to walk, you know, down the hallway and go into the other room and just shut the door and <laughs> just completely tune out and not be present for that. So I've always been really sensitive. I pretty much have always felt that it, there was something wrong with me or that I was just weak in some way and now only now am I starting to really recognize that it's these are all part of something that could be used as a strength and could be used to sort of support me in life so that's kind of where I'm at is reframing a lot of these things that I felt like were wrong with me and looking at them from a new perspective so that's kind of what my childhood was like, uh, with as far as you know, my spirituality goes, I guess. Um, and then when I was around ten, I had my first kind of heart opening or heartbreaking experience with uh, my dad. He actually was just someone who probably was dealing with his own mental health issues and emotional issues, guilt, and probably just a lot of other things. And so he kind of disappeared from our life and he didn't, my, me and my sister, and he was just gone <laughs> at some point and just kind of like disappeared. And so for a while I did try and find him and contact him and try to stay in touch, but it just, he just completely pulled away and felt that he couldn't be a parent, I guess. So that was really sad for me because I was very close to him growing up and that experience I feel like gave me a lot of pain at the time and it was very sort of traumatic on an emotional level and I think that that has sort of led me to eventually have more compassion for people and want to help people, especially who are dealing with self-hatred or addictions or things, you know, like that, because we can be so hard on ourselves. And especially when the other people around us don't really know how to handle like a dysfunctional personality or someone who's going through a really difficult time. You know, sometimes there's a tendency to just blame or judge people for what they're not good at doing, you know, for like my dad not being a great, very consistent parent with us before he left. I think that he felt a lot of shame around that. And so I think that that whole experience just kind of makes me feel like, like it was part of me becoming a more compassionate person, I guess. So that was kind of the big thing that sort of ripped me open, I feel like. And then when I was a teenager, I really didn't handle that very well. And I really feel like I was trying to block off my sensitivity and to just not be sensitive anymore, to just not feel my emotions. And so I, I did that in various ways, but I just really couldn't be present with the amount of difficulty that I was going through on an internal level and not to mention you know all of that on top of the usual teenage stuff that everybody goes through is you know it was challenging so that time I really just kind of was hiding I guess you know from my own like tendencies and my own intuition and my own ability to feel pain and to feel to feel anything and then as I was, um, you know, I still, I mean, I still was very sensitive, even as a teenager. I remember in my high school, <laughs> we had a health class that um, we had to watch a movie about, um, it was like a person who was very, she was really thin because she had an eating disorder. And 
I just remember watching, and it was a, a documentary about somebody who actually had the eating disorder, so they were actually, you know, going through it. And I remember that I just passed out. <laughs> just, I was getting, I was feeling more and more lightheaded as we were watching this, but I, I was just looking at this person going through this thing, and I was feeling what she was feeling, and I don't know, it just, it, I, my head just went down on my desk. I literally passed out. And that was something that would happen to me sometimes, like from time to time, I would just get really lightheaded and, and pass out. <laughs> and so I think that that's something that, especially now, you know, that I'm older and I'm doing intuitive work, I've heard that that other intuitive people have that experience too, that that you almost, there's this tendency to have like low blood sugar or low blood pressure or, you know, some kind of combination of things that makes you just very, like you just feel what other people are going through. And it can be so overwhelming that if you don't know how to separate yourself from it, you can actually physically feel how other people are feeling. And so that was one of my first experiences of, of, that you know and it was just so weird because obviously nobody else in the class had that reaction and it was so embarrassing <laughs> but um now I, I have another perspective on it or I can see it in a different way so yeah that was that was kind of another example of like where I was at in my teen years with my empathy and sensitivity and, you know, after that, I feel like I was just kind of still not really understanding what that was. And so I didn't really do anything with it. And then when I went into my 20s, when I was 19, I actually met my partner and I started getting into health and the body and the physical body and diet and things that were, you know, like about caring for yourself sort of physically. And so I feel like that's really where I started to get in touch more with the Virgo <laughs> energy was just really starting to care so much about like the body and wanting to understand it. So I actually started doing some research on, you know, hormones and the menstrual system and kind of women's health was really interesting to me and I actually started doing fertility awareness and actually learning how to teach the method to others and that was something that I wanted to do for people. Um, if you're not familiar, fertility awareness is a method of natural birth control that's very scientific and it's actually, you know, people say natural birth control, oh yeah, that's how I got pregnant or whatever, but it's, it's really not that. It's totally scientifically proven and a lot of women use it and it actually has a higher effectiveness rate when, it, when it's used correctly. It has a higher effectiveness rate than the pill and, you know, even condoms and all this other stuff. It's like 99.7% effective or something. So it's really, really effective. And it's very scientific. So I was getting into, you know, looking at the body and the hormones and from this kind of scientific perspective. And at the same time, there was this desire to live more creatively and to sort of, there was just something calling to me, something that was sort of like, I was very passionate about that, but something was missing from it, I feel. And so I was also writing novels and I, I actually wanted to be an author and I still feel that that's something that's on my path even though I haven't published any of my novels yet. But that's also kind of what segued into reading tarot was actually the process of writing. I was always drawn to like supernatural stories and stories that involved magic or you know psychic ability. And so I actually started researching tarot for writing and I actually started using it in my stories and also using it in my writing process. So I would pull three cards for each chapter or if I didn't know what was going to come next or if I didn't know what was going on with a certain character, I just pull cards on them and that's how I would sort of let my work, you know, grow organically. So it was really fun and 
I started doing more reading cards for myself in that process because it was just working really well for me creatively. And so that's really how I got into tarot was through my creativity. It was through writing that brought me to it. And even more um, interestingly, I actually had synchronicities coming in for me around my writing and tarot and how those connected when I actually was doing a writing class in um, Grass Valley area, which is where I used to live. And I um, turned in a portion of a story for, you know, review from my classmates. And the teacher actually happened to be really good friends with Mary Greer, who lives also in that area. And so she connected us and I started working with Mary Greer a little bit, doing some readings with her and I just poured myself into her books and it was just really exciting to me. And I I just again felt that I was being pulled (laughs) in this direction of reading cards. And so everything I felt like that I started going down this path of writing and then it was kind of turning me back to tarot or I would be writing and I would want to write about tarot. So it was just kind of coming up organically that I would, you know, start doing readings for people. And I started uh, for free online doing readings. I just made a post on Craigslist, you know, in my local community, just saying, oh, I'm learning tarot, I'll give free readings. And it was really fun. And I was getting a lot of really good feedback from people and people started coming back for more and more readings. And so that's really how I realized, you know, okay, maybe at some point I should open up a shop and just start doing readings because I felt really called to it. Like it was very fun to me. And I just felt that, you know, with what I was hearing back from people, it seemed to be helping them. So that's how it started. And then, um, and then, yeah, and then I just started doing professional readings at a certain point because I felt like, well, I'm, I'm going to need to be doing something. And, you know, if I want to do this full time, I might as well just go for it, you know, so that I can actually do what I love instead of you know, doing something else and then just doing readings like at the end of the day or on weekends, you know, it just felt like, well, why not try and make this sort of like the main thing? So, and it, and it worked. And so that's really where I'm at right now. And uh, yeah, so that's my sort of history with tarot specifically. My spiritual growth is sort of tied to that, as you could imagine, but I did start having a lot more experiences with spirit through my dreams and that really has always been a theme for me I've always had really vivid dreams ever since I can remember and I remember some of my dreams from when I was really little too Uh, so dreams are also a really powerful thing for me as far as connecting to spirit and receiving guidance one of the biggest uh, spiritual events that ever happened in my life actually happened about a year almost like a year and a half ago where I was sort of directly contacted by my guides. It was the first time that I actually understood that that was what was happening. I mean, they were probably contacting me way before that, but I just didn't really know exactly what that was, or I wasn't framing it that way. Um, But what happened was I actually had a dream about a book. Uh, It's called Ask Your Guides by Sonia Choquette. I actually dreamt about that book before I ever even knew that it existed. Um, I had a dream that I was walking in a bookstore and that I saw this book that said something about connecting to your guides on the cover. And I hadn't been thinking about spirit guides at all before that happened. It really wasn't something that I was focusing on. But in the dream, I was like, oh, that looks interesting. So I took it off the shelf and opened it and I looked and there was a picture of my house (laughs) where I live in Oregon. There was a picture of my house in the dream inside the book and the chapter was on like connecting to guides in nature and it was all about you know how there's there's guiding energies and how there's you know beneficial loving spiritual entities around my home in nature and that I can connect with them through nature And so that was really interesting to me. Uh, I wrote down the dream because I always write down my dreams. And uh, so I wrote that one down. And then later that day, my partner and I went to Portland 
and we weren't even we were just going to the grocery store or something and we were driving by we drove by this bookstore and I just looked over at it and I was I just felt this sudden urge I was like okay get out of the car like go to the bookstore and so I just was like hey I can you let me out like I just need to go to this bookstore really quick I don't know why but it's just there was no thought behind it It was just this pure like intention this clear intention like go in there so I just jumped out of the car, you know, right in the street and ran over to the bookstore and went inside and I saw that book from my dream on the shelf and I opened it and I actually literally opened it just to a random page and the page that I opened it to said how to connect with your guides in nature. <laughs> so it was pretty amazing and I was totally just like shocked and just stupefied <laughs> and I'm not even going into all the deep there was a bunch of other details about the dream that were you know the same as when I went in there so it was just like the one of the biggest events of my life in terms of my spiritual growth because I realized that there was something that was trying to get my attention and I, I, I knew that I was being called that I was receiving guidance and I could feel it so directly and so that was really exciting to me and it just, you know, has, and the book itself is amazing. Of course I bought it. So I recommend that to anybody who wants to connect with their guides. Um, and so, yeah, that, that was huge. And then ever since then, you know, a big part of my spiritual practice has been connecting with my guides. So I meditate with them and I ask them, I talk to them sometimes and I just ask for their help. And I, um, I typically always get a response, uh, even if it's not the one that I want, <laughs> I always get a response and, uh, that's just a big part of my process. So meditating with my guides is something that I do on a daily basis now. And I still write my dreams down every morning. And for me personally, those two things have been the biggest um, growth factors <laughs> for my spiritual journey. Like those, those two practices more than anything else have really transformed my approach to spirituality and the way that I receive guidance. And they are, you know, important for readings too. You know, if I have a very vivid dream, a lot of times, well, not a lot of times, but often it can be that the symbols in the dream are for, you know, a client or that it has something to do with something that I'm going to interact with the next day. I try not to like ask for a lot of guidance around client readings and things like that because I also need to rest <laughs> so I don't necessarily want to be working while I'm sleeping by just tuning into people so I've definitely set more boundaries and so that doesn't happen quite as often anymore uh, mainly because I have asked for it not to because I also need you know a break <laughs> Um, so that's really kind of like my spiritual journey, I guess. That's really where I'm at at this point. And it is always growing. It's always changing. Um, I've definitely been getting more psychic insights recently, but I, I wouldn't call myself necessarily a psychic because, you know, sometimes it's just my intuition uh, and sometimes it's not relevant for a psychic, you know, information to come through in a reading. It's all... It, I just trust in every moment that that's what is supposed to happen. So I'm hesitant to kind of like label myself, but I do know that sort of everything that I've been through as a person, you know, starting with being that sensitive, you know, at a very young age to, you know, empathizing that much when I was a teenager to where I'm at now doing readings and, you know, everything in between. Like, it's all been part of my process and my development, and I can't necessarily explain why certain things happen to me or why certain things come through me. So I'm coming to terms more and more with the fact that, like, I, that I am interacting with something that I don't necessarily understand completely. And uh, that maybe we as a culture don't necessarily understand completely yet. But I do feel that we will be able to measure 
intuition and psychic ability or you know we'll be able to understand these kinds of energies more and more uh, as we just evolve you know as a species but right now sometimes you know it's still kind of misunderstood and I'm even uncovering a lot of definitions you know like I was sharing before about feeling that I was weak or feeling that there was something wrong with me I'm still uncovering things like that I'm still uncovering things that block me from fully trusting it and from fully trusting you know myself sometimes so I'm still working through that it's definitely a work in progress but that's where I am right now is you know meditating uh, once a day and uh, well sometimes several times a day if I'm doing multiple readings in a day and also just meditating for myself you know in the mornings or in, in the evenings sometimes just for me not just before a reading and writing down my dreams those are the two biggest practices that I that I use uh, that will, you know, hopefully maybe help some of you guys if you're interested in, you know, developing your intuition or, you know, whatever, if you just want to get more in touch with your inner world. To me, those are the two biggest things. So that's sort of where I'm at now and where I've been. And I hope that this has been, I don't know, fun or <laughs> enlightening in some way that you know a little bit more about me and you know who's reading your cards every month if you are you know checking in every month for the creativity readings and thank you especially to those of you who are I'm super honored to just be connected with you guys it is amazing I love you guys so much and you're just the most amazing people and Thank you. Thank you so much. And I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day. And I will see you uh, for next month's videos. Okay. Bye.